For those not familiar with Rune Factory, the experience primarily consists of two distinct aspects, those being farming and dungeons. Frontier is no different, with the player being tasked with focusing on nurturing and harvesting many different crops, whilst exploring a variety of dungeons, which are all home to a set of diverse enemies and items that will aid you in your effort to maintain your farm. Time plays a huge factor in the game, with each day moving by quickly, it soon becomes apparent that managing your time is an integral part of the experience. You'll find yourself setting aside certain days to battle deep into a dungeon, while others may find you focusing on your farm work. The seasons will change as well, so holidays, events and certain types of crops that can be grown will change too. A whole range of weapons are at your disposal, as well as the ability to tame the enemies you encounter and have them accompany you when venturing outside of the village. Frontier is a highly rewarding title. You'll find yourself overwhelmed with the amount of things to do, which is guaranteed to keep players occupied for hours on end. The first thing that will strike many about Fragile Dreams is the incredible visuals that are surprisingly detailed for a Wii game. Each environment, character and NPC all possess the same level of craftsmanship, which really adds to the overall experience. As the player, you take up the role of Seto, a young boy who searches the world after a cataclysmic event resulted in nearly all of the world's population vanishing. Essentially an action RPG, the gameplay leans heavily on the Wii remote, with it acting as Seto's flashlight. During combat, Seto Seto has access to up to four weapons that each provide different means of attacks in order to overcome the variety of enemies that occupy the world. Upon defeating them, you receive experience points and money that can be used to further enhance your abilities as well as gain useful items. Overall, Fragile Dreams is a truly touching adventure. If this one passed you by, it well and truly deserves a playthrough. Super Paper Mario is a pretty unique experience that manages to combine platforming with various RPG elements that do slightly distance itself from the previous entries in the series, but it still manages to provide one of the most engaging Paper Mario outings to date. The game is split up into various chapters, with the player being required to attain a heart in order to advance to the next. It primarily all takes place from a 2D perspective, before Mario is given the ability to flip into 3D, which allows players to traverse each level and overcome various obstacles that may block the way forward. Throughout the experience, a scoring system is used, which also acts like XP. The more enemies you defeat or items you use, the more experience you acquire, the more levels you will gain, which results in more HP being awarded to the player. As I mentioned earlier, it's nowhere near as good as the previous entries in the series, such as the Thousand Year Door, but what is on offer is still bound to satisfy both fans and newcomers alike. Muramasa the Demon Blade is a side-scrolling action RPG that plays a bit like a 2D fighter combined with the classic 2D Metroidvania games of old. Each encounter allows the player to take advantage of two different types of swords. Blades allow faster chains of attacks, whereas long blades are slower but have more hits per swing. The player can equip up to three swords at any one time and switch between them on the fly depending on the situation they find themselves in. Upon changing swords, the character performs a quick draw attack that hits every enemy on the screen that is subject to a cooldown period so players can't abuse the ability. On top of this, each sword has a durability meter that can be replenished by collecting the souls of the various enemies you defeat. By acquiring these souls and various items that are littered throughout each area, it is also possible to forge new weapons and upgrade each through the use of the skill tree system that adds a nice sense of freedom to the way in which you want to play. Overall, Muramasa is an incredible experience, and with it also being available on the PlayStation Vita, it's never been easier to jump in and try it out for yourself. Dawn of the New World is a direct sequel to Tales of Symphonia on the Nintendo GameCube and picks up two years after the events of the original game. The story starts with our new protagonist Emil as his hometown is attacked which unfortunately results in him losing his parents. The atrocity was carried out by Lloyd, the main hero of the previous game, which prompts Emil to set out on an adventure to ultimately find answers. Gameplay wise, the experience takes advantage of the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, which play an integral part in figuring out the many puzzles that are thrown at you. 
but during combat is when Dawn of the New World is truly at its best. You take control of a meal with your party members being handled by the AI, which do a surprisingly good job in keeping up with the action. It's all presented in real time, with the main objective being to fill a bar known as the Unison Gauge, which ultimately results in all of the characters coming together to perform devastating attacks. If you're a fan of the Tales series, there's plenty on offer here to warrant a purchase, and for those not invested, it will still provide a fantastic journey. Arkrise Fantasia is a traditional JRPG in every sense of the word. Its engaging turn-based battling system, customization, and weapon options are bound to satisfy fans of the genre, along with its rather moving and well-thought-out narrative that will stick with you long after the credits have rolled. As the player, you take up the role of La Ark, a mercenary who, after losing a battle amongst the clouds, is saved by a mysterious girl known as Riffia. Gameplay-wise, each battle is entirely menu-driven, with a number of action points being allotted to distance distribute between each party member. As you would expect, stronger attacks require more points, whilst defensive manoeuvres, moving or using items cost significantly less. The system manages to add to each encounter and requires the player to actively keep in mind the most efficient way in which to advance. If you are fond of the many JRPGs that have come before, you'll feel instantly at home with Arkrise Fantasia. Pandora's Tower is an action RPG with quite a unique premise. The player assumes the role of Aeron, a former soldier of the kingdom who is tasked with lifting a curse set on his lover Elena. It sees her slowly transforming into a monster, and the only way to counteract it is to locate powerful beings known as masters with their flesh providing a means in which to stave off the mutation. Now there are two main styles of gameplay presented in the game. One sees the player visiting Elena and offering her gifts in order to improve the affinity between the characters which intricately ties into which ending the player will receive. The other style is the main drawer of the experience and sees Aeron exploring the various towers that house the masters. At the start you possess a sword, but throughout the adventure you'll come into contact with various other weapons that can change up the pace of the combat. But one item that stays with you is the chain, and it soon becomes one of the most valuable. You'll be using it to traverse each tower as well as subdue each master by ripping off limbs, bones, and various body parts. If Pandora's tower passed you by it well and truly deserves a place in any RPG fan's collection. Acting as a direct sequel to the GameCube title Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn picks up three years after the events of the previous entry and sees players encountering an incredible cast of characters that manage to propel the narrative forward in meaningful ways. Gameplay-wise, the tried and tested Fire Emblem formula once again takes center stage and sees players taking command of various units. Each battle possesses a surprising amount of difficulty and will test the most proficient of players throughout the course of the main campaign that manages to span nearly 50 hours, but thanks to the handy battle save feature that was introduced with this entry of the series, it's now easier than ever to put the game down and come back to it, especially during some of the more lengthy encounters. If you're looking for a perfect slice of turn-based strategy action on the Wii, look no further than Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. The last story sees players being introduced to a vast island known as Lazulus, along with a band of mercenaries consisting of six members, each with their own unique backgrounds. The narrative is split up into various chapters and manages to delve into each of the group's own unique story that is bound to keep you engaged over the course of the adventure. Now players primarily take control of Zale, a young man who dreams of becoming a knight and take advantage of the various abilities he possesses during battle. Each encounter is presented in real time and blends certain elements together to create something truly special. From first person to stealth and cover based mechanics, there is a lot to get used to, but once everything clicks, it becomes one of the most intriguing aspects of the experience and will manage to leave a lasting impression upon many. The Last Story is an incredible RPG in every sense of the word. It has a lot to offer, even though at first that may not seem the case. It has a lot to offer, even though at first that may not seem to be the case. The cast is exceptional, the world is captivating, the combat is a blast and the amount of content is truly impressive. If you're a fan of the genre, you owe it to yourself to play this one.
Xenoblade Chronicles sees players taking up the role of Shulk, a young scientist who is thrown into an adventure after his colony is attacked by mechanical warriors known as Mechon. The narrative is one of the finest aspects of the experience. Each character is truly likeable and throughout the course of the adventure there are plenty of twists and turns that will test each of them. Visually for a Wii game, Xenoblade Chronicles is stunning. Each environment is vivid and charming. It all manages to come together and adds a real weight to the world that's depicted. The combat system is a real highlight and offers many ways in which to engage enemies. It all takes place in real time, with each party member possessing their own unique abilities known as arts. Each is subject to a cooldown, which manages to add a nice layer of strategy during encounters, and timing each correctly is to not put your party at risk. Overall, this is one of the finest games ever released on the Wii. It well and truly deserves a place in anyone's collection.